a lot of people are struggling, uh, you know, whether it's with sickness, financial issues, marriage issues, children issues, Hashem Yishmo, the Gemara says that to have a child that's off the derech, that's completely, uh, you know, uh, rejecting the Torah and its ways and not listening to his uh, parents, it, the pain from that is worse than the pain of Gogu Magog. The, the last war of the world. So the Chachamim knew very well how difficult it is to have a child that uh, is difficult. And of course, we understand it. We understand, you know, raising a kid is, uh, is not an easy thing. Uh, and in today's world, with all the distractions and everything else, it's uh, needless to say, difficult. So uh, with all of the difficulties that people have every day, you know, it's a... Uh, for whatever reason or another, people uh, lose hope pretty quickly. Uh, even though they continue, they you know they continue going to work, they continue staying married, they continue doing everything, but it seems like they lose steam because they feel like sometimes maybe God's not listening to their prayers, maybe maybe he doesn't care, maybe this, maybe that. And I think that one of the most valuable lessons that I learned in my life. Uh, you know that 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 helped me. Uh, I wish I would have learned it sooner, but that helped me get a new perspective at life, a new perspective of how to deal with problems, uh, big or small. Uh, is is really said here in this parasha, in Parashat Vayishlach. You have Yaakov Avinu now on the way to his father's house, but of course on the way. Uh, he finds out that uh, Esav, Esav is coming with uh, hundreds of commanders, an entire army. Uh, some say each one of the commanders has its own army, meaning he literally came with hundreds of thousands, if not millions of people. Some say it was just a few hundred people, but either way, it's very, very intimidating to say the least. Um, and uh, Esav was a, a king, if you will. I mean, he was the king of Edom, or Sal of Edom. So it wasn't like just some uh, his, you know, young brother, uh, you know, older brother. It was, uh, you know, somebody that was very intimidating. And Yaakov, Yaakov says, "Atzileni nami yad achim yad Esav. Save me from the hand of my brother. Save me from Esav. Help me, Kadosh Baruch Hu. Yaakov was scared. So the question is, why is Yaakov Avinu Kodesh Kodashim? Why is he scared? First of all, as far as strength, we know that he was very strong. Second of all, as far as a, uh, dealing with uh, others in war and things of that nature, the kids you know, that he had, the 12 tribes, or at this point had 11, uh, were all powerful warriors. You look at the Midrashim, Midrash Me'am Loez, Midrash Raba, other places, and it talks about the wars of the tribes. Not just Shimon and Levi against the, uh, you know, in this week's parasha, but others. Other wars that they fought, you see that they literally destroyed entire cities. Uh, just them as individuals. So they were very powerful. So what's the, um, what's the fear here? Why is Yaakov scared of meeting Esau? So Yaakov says to HaKadosh Baruch Hu, Katonti mikol hachasadim umikol haemit. That... Kadosh Baruch Hu, I already know that you've given me so much. You've given me so much that perhaps I've already used up all of the merits that I've had, you know, getting all the good that you're giving me. Because, of course, you've given me a lot more than I merited. So maybe perhaps... Esav has the merit of doing kibud avayim, honoring the parents over this last 20 years that I haven't been around. So perhaps uh, he has more merits than I do and maybe you'll give him the ability to kill me and hurt my children and so on and so forth. So already we see the humility in Yaakov Avinu. We see the humility in Yaakov Avinu. But why did Yaakov Avinu push forward anyway? Why did Yaakov Avinu push forward anyway? Of course, HaKadosh Baruch Hu commanded him. But that's, again, the mitzvah. What about on a simple day-to-day -day perspective that he had, that we can read from the verses, 
that helped him move forward despite the difficulty, despite the fact that he sees hey, there's hundreds of people led by Esav who wanted to kill him not that long ago, uh, coming his way. Esav that hates him, coming his way. How does he deal with this difficulty? Now, saying that it's a commandment from Hashem is, is very nice, but how, how is that going to affect our life? There's a lot of mitzvot in the Torah that you tell people, and they say, yeah, but maybe I'm not ready, but maybe this, maybe that. So here, Yaakov Avinu teaches us something very, very important. In the um, section where he discusses how, he discusses how Yaakov became frightened, in chapter 32, verse 8, it says Yaakov became very frightened and it distressed him, he divided the uh, people that were with him uh, and uh, saying that if a sub comes from one camp and it strikes it down, then the uh, um, the remaining camp shall be a refuge. So then Yaakov talks to Hashem. ויאמר יעקב אלוהי אבי אברהם ואלוהי אבי יצחק אדוני אומר אלי שוב לארצך ולמולדתך ואתיבה עמך קטונתי מכל החסדים ומכל האמת אשר עשית את עבדיך כי במקלי עברתי את הירדן הזה ועתה הייתי לשני מחנות אצילי נינה מיד אחי מיד עשו ירא אנוכי אותו פן יבוא ויקני על הבנים הם על הבנים Yaakov Avinu says, God of my father Avraham and God of my father Yitzchak, because Hashem spoke both to Avraham and to Yitzchak and made promises to each one of them individually. Hashem who said to me, he also spoke to me, who said to me, return to your land and to your birthplace and I will do good with you. So he tells Hashem, you're the one that told me to do this, to, to get myself into this situation. In essence, stating a matter of fact, not reminding Hashem. And he says, I have been diminished due to all of the kindness and due to all of the truth that you have done with me, your servant. Exactly what I said before, that he feels like he's already spent all of his merits. But then he says something very powerful. He says, for with my staff, I crossed the Jordan and now I have become two camps. Rescue me, please, from the hand of my brother, from the hand of Esau, for I fear him, lest he come and strike me down, mother and children. So here we see Yaakov Avinu telling us just in between the lines a message that is priceless for your day-to-day -day difficulty. Saying, Hashem, you're the one that told me to do everything. Esau is coming nonetheless. But I have faith. But not only have faith, Common sense tells me, common sense tells me that there's nothing to fear here. Why? Look at my history. At the worst time of my life, when Esav practically chased me out of my father's house and I had to run away, you know, the instructions and the command of my father and mother who told me to leave. As I left, Esav's son, Esav's son came after me. And uh, Elishav, and he came after me, caught me, and was going to kill me, even though he was my student. And the Midrash says that Yaakov told him, listen, our holy Torah tells us that someone that's poor is considered as if he's dead. So just take all of my belongings, everything that I have, or leave me just with my stick, nothing. Nothing, nothing else. Because that's considered as if you killed me anyway. Who knows if I'm going to survive this desert. So here, Yaakov reminds, in essence, himself, but also tells Hashem that he acknowledges the fact that, look, I came down with what? Just my staff alone. All I had was my staff. But now, here I am. I crossed the Jordan with two camps. I have two, four wives, if you will. You know, two wives and two concubines, which in essence were really four wives. The only considered concubines... You know, when compared to Rachel and Leah, we have, I have 11 children and one on the way. I have countless sheep and, 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 and all types of cattle and so on. I have countless money and I, I have everything. I have everything you can possibly imagine. What I come with, I came with a stick. 
at the worst possible time in the world why he thought who knows who knows if he, he's going to survive the journey needless to say ever you know say that oh, i became became a millionaire i'm encountering another problem but i already know that i could rely on you i just don't know if i have the merits because you've given me so much more than i merited that perhaps i've spent my merits this rabotai is really critical when you're dealing with something that's very difficult in your life when you're almost down and out if you will uh, as the expression goes where you feel like you you just hit a wall in your career in your marriage in your torah learning and in, in anything that you have you're in a process of conversion but it seems like nothing's going right you're in a process of this it seems everything is failing all hell breaks loose and you're you're about to lose hope you have to remember this verse why Yaakov Avinu says if I really look at things yeah the picture at the time I was dealing with it looked as dismal as it gets the picture looked awful it was black on black didn't look good I didn't look like I was gonna survive but what ended up happening not only did I survive but I thrived now did it have was it easy absolutely not in the process Levant cheated me for many many years changed my maskoret, my my uh, my salary a hundred times you know I got all types of threats and this and that yeah it wasn't easy but if you look at the end result of each and every point over these last 20 years you see in the end the blessing came most important you look at today today if I compare myself to today versus five years ago I see that yes I went through a lot of problems over the last five years but here I am here I am I got wife and kids I got a house I got this I got that a person can say if I compare myself even the last 10 years not five years 10 years which means what means more problems double the problems at least you see wait I went through a lot of problems during that time many times I wanted to lose that hope and and everything but look at where I am I if you would have told me 10 years ago that I would be here today I would have never imagined it why because 10 years ago I thought I was gonna die now I'm alive and well there's that so if a person just simply takes a serious moment a serious moment to just think about the last five years where you were you five years ago where were you 10 years ago where were you 15 years ago 20 years ago and then depending on how old you are and calculate all of the problems that you could remember especially the big ones that you thought that you're never going to overcome the the irs audits and the uh lawsuits and the uh uh, divorces and the marriages and the children and uh, all, all types of uh, important people no longer being in your life and two, 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 and everybody has all of these problems the reality is when you were dealing with this darkness it seemed like it was that was the end uh, or the misery was not gonna end whichever way whichever perspective we're looking at either black or black either way it looked horrible you never thought that you were gonna be past it but then you look at yourself today sure you're dealing with a new problem that's completely unrelated to the past perhaps but don't just focus on today's problem because you have a limited perspective you have today's perspective look at yesterday's problems five years ago's problems ten years ago's problems look at all those problems and how it all worked out in the end how a kadosh baruch Hu helped you in the end sending you the money that you needed at the you know at the last minute sending you the woman that you wanted from a place you never thought of sending you the husband that you wanted at a place you never thought of giving you a kid when you thought that you're never gonna have it and so on and so forth in the end a kadosh who brought you even more than you expected perhaps it wasn't on your timing and on your, your desire and so on and so forth but at the end you got it most of us got a lot more than we even asked for if we look at things so if we see that Akadosh Baruch Hu already blessed us so much more than we anticipated so much more than we even thought was possible in the past problems when everything looked dark which shows us that we had to go through that problem we had to go through that darkness in order to see the light 
why are we so focused on the darkness today and just thinking it's not going to end? Why is this any different than any of the other problems? They all seem to be permanent, horrible, and so on and so forth. Yaakov Avinu gives us a fantastic lesson here, telling us, look, I had a lot of problems. My own brother wanted to kill me. His son wanted to kill me. Everybody wanted to kill me. I got cheated. All I had was simply a stick. That's all I had. But today I have two machanot. I have two camps. I have so much that I would have never thought of you had you asked me 20 years ago if, if I would ever have such a thing. And that's in essence what you got to do sometimes. You got to write down your miracles. When you're experiencing them, you find something, you get something, you, you acquire something, whatever it is that, that, that is a miraculous situation in, in your life, you have to write it down somewhere or you know, engrave it into your mind. But most importantly, think about not just the negativity that you're dealing with, but also all of the wonderful blessings that Hashem gave you, especially at the times where you're most weak, especially at times where you're struggling. Because if you only think about the wall that's in front of you, that's where you'll stay you're simply defeating yourself you'll stay exactly in front of that wall and you'll have a hopeless situation and you won't get out of that situation until you start looking around the wall beyond the wall and so you know and and really do the same thing you perhaps you've done in the past which is you know pray to hashem or or or, you know if you were not uh, religious perhaps you were patient enough for hashem's mercy to come to you in a different way but the point being is is that if a person simply focuses just on a problem in front of him he is now creating a new problem what's the new problem he's limiting his mindset from getting past this problem all you got to do is look at the fact that 20 years ago all you had was a stick all you had was a stick today you have a lot more than a stick you perhaps maybe have a house you have a car maybe a few new kids maybe a spouse maybe a new job maybe a few new jobs You have a lot. You've acquired a lot over the last 20 years. In essence, you've been gifted a lot by Hashem over the last 20 years. So it wasn't so bad after all. It wasn't so bad after all. Surely you remember it and it was difficult, but it wasn't as bad and as permanent as you thought it was at the time. This is a very, very important thing for a person to know and to to, to constantly remind himself of. Uh, another of the many, many reasons why we read the same parasha every year. I've read this parasha many times, but uh, today I had, or yesterday I had, this insight that perhaps in previous years I didn't have. Uh, why? Because Hashem gives you different insights at different times of your life. And it's very important for a person to know that, again, if I only look at today, I'm limiting. I'm limiting myself. If I look at the past and where I am today, you'll see how many blessings came along the way. Surely you could say, yeah, but maybe in the past I had more money. Okay, don't just look at one thing. Look at everything. Look at the whole picture. Maybe you had more money back then, but did you have kids? Maybe you had more money back then, but did you have a wife? Maybe you had more money back then, but did you have this, 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 and all the million and a half other things that you have acquired and have been gifted over the last 20 years? No. So would you pay that money for all of that? I'm sure you would. And that's the key. If a person looks at all of the gifts that Hashem gave him, he'll see that he's always ahead of the game. He's always ahead. With Hashem, you can't lose. Only thing is, are you paying back? Are you paying back? Are you doing what you're supposed to? Are you keeping Shabbat? Are you protecting your eyes and your breath? Are you modest? Are you eating kosher? Is your business kosher? Is your mouth kosher? And so on and so forth. Are you doing what you're supposed to be doing? This Rabotai, I think, is a very important and critical lesson because we're all dealing with tests. Baruch Hashem, I get countless messages every single day with no exception. Every single day of different people struggling for, with different things, different crises. And I think that if we all looked at life the way Yaakov just said it, automatically 80% of the anxiety that we have goes away. Why? Because we know at that point, okay, it's bad. It looks horrible. But so did the other 5,000 problems I had in the last 20 years. And at the end, HaKadosh Baruch took care of him. He took care of him in his own timing, maybe not my timing. He took care of him in his own way, maybe not my way. But 20 years later, you see, it all worked out. It all worked out. It all worked out in a better way than I could even imagine. And perhaps I even learned a thing or two from it. 
which means that I needed to go through it. I needed to go through the pain in order to truly enjoy the pleasure. 